coverage of the Ondale City of Stirling Sevens is brought to you by Ondale, RBS Private Banking and Data Space Scotland Limited. We're back at Bridge Hall for the Endeo City of Stirling Sevens. We've got some cracking sides here today. We've got Munster, we've got Edinburgh, and we've got a real clutch of good local sides. There's going to be some great rugby. There's going to be something for everybody on what promises to be a smashing afternoon. And first of all, it was the youngsters on display and Stirling Castle on their way here to winning their tournament. And I tell you what... I hope Sterling Koji and Jardin's got an eye on some of these youngsters because these certainly will be the stars of the future. The tournament itself got off to a flying start with the Golden Lions parachute display team from the Royal Regiment of Scotland flying in the match balls and handing them over to Edinburgh captain Ali Hogg. And in the first round, the much-fancied Munster team put West out. But there was a lot happening elsewhere, particularly in the hospitality tent. With President John Clark obviously enjoying looking after his guests like Kay Adams, Andy Nicholl. And the lady who was guest of honour, Eleanor Curry, 100 years young, celebrated her birthday just three days before the tournament. Outside as well, there was plenty for the kids, plenty for the big wins as well. But there was no way they were getting me to do this one, I can tell you. We left that to the boy in the Melrose strip. And there was Scruff, the Stirling County mascot. He was joining in the fun as well. And sponsors on Dale, they were throwing out wee rugby balls just as fast as Kenny Logan could sign them. And back on the pitch, into the quarter-finals. Well, this is one that really got the crowd on their feet. From well inside his own 22, Stirling County, number 10, Massey to Hakarena. The whole way to go in under the post against Edinburgh. But Edinburgh, in the end, proving too powerful. Andy Maxwell in for a try that helped take them through to the semi-final. Munster, no real problem against Stirling University. Man of the tournament, Jeremy Manning in for that try. But we had quite a game coming up in the next quarter final. And Curry at one point looked as though they might give the All Stars a fright. Kevin O'Shane going in at the post there. But with a fair smattering of the Scotland 7 squad in the ranks, the All Stars were just that wee bit too strong. Colin Shaw shrugging off a couple of tackles there. Taking on the final man, inside pass to Mike Adamson, in under the post. So into the first semi-final, Edinburgh against Hawks. And again, it was that man, Andy Maxwell, doing a lot of damage. Taking the ball up to the halfway line, looking for a wee bit of support. Getting it there. And David Blair, guttling that one away. But in the end, it was that man, Maxwell, who started the move, who finished it off. Another great sprint from the halfway line to go in under the posts. Hawks didn't give up though, and a scorching try by Sean Murray. Well, so they played to the end, and it was some consolation for them. The second semi final was the mouth watering prospect the All Stars against Munster. And it was the All-Stars who struck first, Scott Forrest. Taking the ball deep into Munster territory there. And patiently just waiting for support. Pulled down on the 22. Finding Colin Shaw. Out to Massey to Hikarena, the link man. Brought in from the Stirling side. And who finished it off? None other than Wayne Barr. A man whose career started at Stirling. Now at Dunfermline. One of the great characters in the Scottish game. Going into the final minute and Munster 22 points to no behind. They wanted something to take back with them and they got it in the final minute. The ball taken there by Ian Hanley and finally Ian Grace, the man 
who naffled that one and got in for a consolation try for the Irishman. Coverage of the Ondale City of Stirling Sevens is brought to you by Ondale, RBS Private Banking, and Data Space Scotland Limited. So to the plate final between Bigger and Barham Muir, and Bigger opened the scoring with a super try there by Mark McKean. But in the end, Barham Muir proved too strong coming back in the second half. And this is the one that really clinched it. First of all, the break by Ali Edwards thumping through there and on his shoulder. Skipper James White in for the try that took the plate back to Megatland. And so to the final of the Andeo City of Stirling Sevens between the RBS Private Banking All-Stars and Edinburgh. And in the first half, well, the All-Stars simply blew Edinburgh away. Colin Shaw scorching in for the first try in under the post. Great start for the All-Stars. It got even better. Long chase downfield by Tom Sargent, taken out by Andy Turnbull. Mike Adamson there to Hakarena, the link man. Out to Scott Forrest. Forrest looking for a wee bit of support. Comes again from this time Wayne Barr. Barr spots the gap. Draws the defence. Lovely wee pass to, to Hakarena. And again, the Sterling crowd loved that. It was all going right for the All-Stars, and when it's going for you, it's going for you. What a perfect bounce from that wee chip ahead for Scott Forrest to score under the posts. Edinburgh were always going to hit back, and into the second half, they turned the screw a wee bit. David Blair trying to open it up there, and Mark Cairns, the man, finding Ali Warnock on his shoulder, and Warnock going in at the corner for Edinburgh's opening try. Only a couple of minutes later, and this time it was Andy Turnbull, thought he was through, taken out by Stevie Gordon. Ben Mayer right there to release the ball for Warnock. Warnock saying, what, our ball? Thank you very much. And Mark Cairns was the man who powered over for Edinburgh's second try. Was it going to be a comeback? Not if the All-Stars had anything to do with it. And Mike Adamson linking up with his old Hawks teammate Stevie Gordon for the try that really clinched it for the All-Stars. Edinburgh, well, they were still in the game. They still wanted to put on a show for the crowd. David Blair finding Ben Mayer outside him. And now, well, this was interesting. The Kiwi scrum half round under the post. Doesn't bother coming back to take the kick. Takes it from the end goal area. Is that OK? Ted could seem to think so, and what Ted says goes. Well, the All-Stars looking for a big, big finish, and Mike Adamson looked as though he was going to set them up for a terrific climax, but no, interception there by Mark Cairns, looking for support, gets it from David Blair, but his try was too little too late to prevent the RBS private banking All-Stars lifting the Ondeo City of Stirling Sevens trophy. And after he'd collected the cup, I asked Captain Scott Forrest just how hard it had been to keep coach Kenny Logan on the touchline. I mean, he got a bit, Kenny got a bit of a run in the first game, managed to um, get handed a try over the line, so I think he, he thought his work was done after that, so he was quite happy. And you'll all be quite happy tonight after a win like that? It was, yeah, it was a good day. Um, Edinburgh were good in the final, but I think that, that first half performance was well, it pretty much just blew them out of the water, yep. to be fair. So it'll be a good night tonight, certainly. That's the plan anyway. And it all starts there with the spraying of the champagne to celebrate the end of another magnificent sevens tournament here at Stirling. This is Ron Evans for Scottish Rugby Television at Bridge Hall. Coverage of the Ondale City of Stirling Sevens is brought to you by Ondale, RBS Private Banking and Data Space Scotland Limited.